Yo, what up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. I'm trying to catch the end of this Jaime Mugia card. Toriano Johnson main event hasn't started. Make sure you guys come in and smash the like button. Um, this zone commentary is awful. They suck. zone commentary is is got to be the worst, bro. I'm watching my boy Rashidi Ellis versus Rocha. You can argue that he won every single round. And the commentary is just horrible. They, they keep trying to marginalize Rashidi Ellis. This is what they do to black fighters. Peep the peep the Pele. They just they keep saying how, oh, his speed. He's a power puncher too. Rashidi Ellis has um good knockouts too. But they keep acting like he's pillow fisted and he's only throwing light pitter patter shots. Which is not the the case. And he's definitely winning this fight. Round four. Man, stop. You asked Ellis what his best punch was. He said, my right hand. He, uh, he's arguably pitching the shutout right now. Man, stop, bro. And he has an excellent check hook as well. So his commentary is laughable. Jaime Mugil is allowed to run away from real smoke at 54. You know how that go. Round four, we in it. And then the other part that's horrible with the commentary is Rashidi Ellis. He's clamoring for the big names, like whoever. Listen, Rashidi said he wants the big names, like Pacquiao. He showboat. Oh, he's styling on him right now. Rocha getting styled on, bro. That was a good body shot from Rocha. But listen. Oh, my gosh, bro. Rocha, he can't close the distance good. See, they keep... Oh, my gosh. Bro, who is this DAZN dude? He sucks. This commentary is bloody awful. Bro, they keep... <laughs> this is crazy. Who was the fastest fighter you ever squared off against, Sergio? I can't remember. He said, I can't remember. Oh, my God. Usually it's me, though. Shane Mosley pretty quick. What? Sugar Shane Mosley. Sugar Shane is great. That's right hand right there by one two from Ellis. Bro, Ellis is dominating this fight so far. It's four rounds in. Yeah. Look at Luis. No. He said Mungia is not running. Whatever. Why didn't he fight Charlo? Why why didn't he fight real fifty four pounders? Jared Hurd. That'd be a great fight. Bro, why can't the ref is stupid too, bro? Oh my god! Where is it saying the rules that you can't talk to your opponent and taunt them? Where, where, where did Golden Boy get these people from, bro? Oh my gosh! Where, where did this ref come from? He says that he can't. They can't talk. What what part of the rules is that? That you can't speak to your opponent. You can't trash talk. You can't. Man, come on, bro. Come on, bro. They're warming up in the back. Um, this DAZN commentary is atrocious. It really is. They keep, this is what they do. They keep saying, like, they keep making it like, like, people have this notion, preconceived notion, like, the black fighter is only just trying to pot shot and stuff like that. The more authoritative and better punch selection has been landed by Rashidi Ellis. He's winning, like, pretty much all these rounds. It's round five, and DAZN is talking about 
the power more powerful guy is Rocha, and he ain't really landed anything. Bro, he's getting out, punch out. You see, he hitting him on the break. That's dirty, illegal. They keep talking about the speed. He's keep. Oh my god. Bro, Rocha is not competing with the volume of punches. He got caught with the left hook. There's always that front foot fighting when you've got an orthodox fighter and a sound ball. Both open up here. Listen, I need y'all to get the likes up. Ellis is winning easy. What? You want to see it? He, the only time he's throwing punches in the clinch. Man, come on, bro. Yeah, very good start to the round for Rocha. He is hey, Bro, he just hit him low. What are we talking about, bro? He just hit him low. That, and he was trying to maul him in the clinch. And the zone keep raving about... <laughs> he lost every round so far. <laughs> Adrian, what up? Yo. That's one way to slow Speedy down. This is crazy. No, come on. Sergio Mor Mora. Oh, my God. Bro, he hit him in the dick, and Sergio Mora says his trunks is up kind of high. Stop it, bro. Bro, stop. This ain't on no channel. It's on the zone. Man, this commentary is terrible, bro. Not only has he closed the distance, but he's going downstairs. So Ellis has he closed the distance? Hey, bro, this is his first round where he's even landing anything, and the low blow just stopped the action. And he just got hit with the one, too. Man, come on, bro. No, it's on the zone. Bro, this is his. This round is better for him, but he's not looking great. Oh, he got hit with a bro. He just got cut. Oh my god, bro, this commentary is crazy. Oh, he got caught with the counter, and he got. Sergio's accompaniment. Yeah. I need y'all. Listen, if we can't, if if y'all ain't interested in this fight, I'll just watch it in peace. We need to get the the likes up. If we can't get the likes up, I'm out. Listen, that's. A, I guess I thought people would want to see the fight, but if not, we got about. I'm gonna do one more round. If the likes ain't up, I gotta I gotta end this one. Bro, this commentary is really really awful, really really bad. Um, Rocha just won one round out of this whole fight, and it was a low blow round. He just threw a low blow. And then Sergio was trying to say his trunks was up high. Crazy. I know, but listen, if, if not enough people are interested in this particular fight, then I'm I, I gotta I gotta end the stream, you know? I told you. Because I gotta conserve my voice anyway for tomorrow's stream. So this this comes at a cost. I'm not gonna burn myself out. I'll just watch this fight in peace. I didn't know. I thought people wanted to see this fight, but it, it don't look like it. Ooh. We ain't got the numbers. Bro, this is literally the worst commentary in boxing. Bro, he won one round out of six. Bro, he just got hit with a right hand. They talk about smart pressure. 
Carter, but he's not overloading on every shot. See that? That's a powerful left. That was not pop. Oh my god. Set it up with a with a throwaway right hook. Very smart on Alexis Roach's part. Bro, they're giving him all the props in, in the in the world, bro. He lost every round but one, and you still raving about the person that won one round. And he just got caught with a hook. And they're not saying, they're not even calling it. Bro, so a black fighter just won four rounds easy. And then now you just randomly talking about the one round that... That Rocha won. Is it just me or is Ellis's movement stop dramatically? No, it's Rocha stopping him. That's what that's what he's doing a lot better. Rocha's timing is a lot better. He's cutting out the ring, and Ellis is respecting the power. Someone said he Loma. I don't get that. This, Todd, in the last fight, if you're facing a power puncher that just stalks you, you gotta be ready to move. You gotta be able to do it for twelve full rounds. In a fight. I mean, Ellis, he's got great he don't know what he's talking about either. You can see these last three rounds, Roach has started to break him down, and that movement has slowed. Consistent. The last three rounds? Okay. Good straight left hand against the ropes by Rocha. Ellis fighting his way off. You can see the Bro, they just give him they just give him props to Rocha like he the only one fighting. It's crazy. The uppercuts are also crisp. I don't like that word composed, Sergio. That's what I say it. <laughs> Damn, they saying he's stopping him. What does that mean? How about ferocious? Watch back. Sir, this this is insane. Like this is this is crazy. Hector Lopez in the corner of Alexis Rocha. Come like it's a different don't, fight. Don't get careless. You gotta still think coming. Bro, they act like Rocha is looking like Mayweather or something. Rocha's corner spot. And like. They're not even counting the Ellis's point punches. That's real smart. He was getting real aggressive at the beginning of the round. Now he's backing up and trying to box. Bro, they're bro. Now they're saying he's he's not. <laughs> Get Sergio Moore the fuck up out of here, bro. He just got tagged. They're not calling, bro. He just got tagged again. They not call. Bro, Sergio Mora. This is this is what. This is a microcosm of the bullshit you see. Sergio Mora and all the DAZN commentators were just giving the man a ton of credit for being aggressive and cutting off the ring and a power puncher, yeah, a brawler. And then Sergio Mora, when he stopped doing all that in the end of the round and he was getting hit with shots, they were saying, oh, yeah, he's choosing the box instead of being so aggressive. I love this. This is great. Man, get these motherfuckers off the air. Get Listen, DAZN got to get out of my country. Period. I don't care where they go. They got to get out of my country, bro. This shit is just goofy. You're not even trying to call the fight fair. It's sounding like the UK. Block Alvaro Ramirez. I don't answer to you. You answer to me. Block him. To, in favor bro. Of Rashid Ellis. He yeah. lost all but like two rounds. Corner after that last round. Gave it away by getting hit by some of those counter punches. But that was a close final round. It could be even up on these judges' scorecards. So. Even? Oh, wow. Oh, no, I agree. 3-3? Three, three? Man, get the fuck out of here, bro. Told him that. He was doing really well, but can't give it away. Bro, he was doing good at the beginning of the round, and then he was getting picked off, and then he just got hit with a 1-2. This is insane, bro. They're acting like one person's the only one working. Oh, he just got hit with an upper. Bro, he got hit with a sneaky uppercut. They, they didn't even call it. Uh, hey, bro, get the zone off of the air. Bro, he just got hit with a snap. Did y'all see that? Bro, he just got hit with a snappy uppercut. They didn't even say nothing. They were just giving all this credit to Rocha in his last round. And in the best, one of the best punches of the fight, they didn't even say nothing. They act like it didn't happen. These dudes is terrible, bro. Bro, they said get past the methodical Rocha, but they didn't say nothing about the upper guy he just got hit with. Stop. Yeah, no, it does. And in fact, 
that's that's the case. I mean, Ellis should be doing well with the counter punching, but I, I, Roach is at, adding really pressuring really smartly. Smartly. So they just giving props to Rocha for man. Get Golden Boy, Dazon. Get them out of here with this. Bro, he just threw like six punches to get him off him, and he just caught him with a left hook. Now they say, bro, they were just saying how Rocha was boxing smartly, and Ellis is dominating round seven right now. See the black fighter is just boxing when he's throwing punches. You see, you see the little subtle in. Come on, bro, bro. They're wowed by everything Roach is doing, but when the black fighter in Rashidi Ellis is landing clutch shots, they say, "Oh yeah, he's you know he's fast." Bro, Roach won like two rounds, five and six maybe. It's round seven. He's definitely losing round seven. If he don't get a knockdown or a knockout in this round, he lost round seven because it's only 10, 11 seconds. Bro, he's he, he got destroyed in round seven. They not even give him. Oh, my God. Get these. Two. Bro. Rocha just had his best rounds and then got chewed up in round seven. And they don't even sound impressed with my boy Rashidi Ellis. This is this is laughable, bro. This is laughable. Rocha was doing cool in round five and six, and he was landing here and there, but he was still being picked off with the counter, and they were, like, marveling at, oh, yeah, oh, oh, Rocha this, Rocha that. But then now, when Rashidi had a, his best round of the fight, probably, round seven, they not even saying nothing. They acting like he's, like, oh, he, he won the round, all right. Like, we're not even going to talk about it. This is embarrassing commentary. You heard Sergio Mora start the, the round off talking about how smartly, um, that was his word. He said he's cutting off the ring smartly. He just got pieced up. He just got pieced up. And there was start. <laughs> this is crazy. See how they keep labeling it speed versus power? But Rashidi's landing great power shots. And he has a 64% knockout ratio. Get these dudes off. I see why they don't got no television network. Their commentary is horrible. Bro, they're like speed versus power. Bro, he gave him five rounds to two, but they just said it was 3-3. Three, three. Bro, he didn't win. Oh, my gosh. Bro, why is the commentary so pro rocha if you if if your unofficial scorecard is five two that means out of seven rounds the motherfucker won two rounds but you guys sound in awe with rocha <laughs> bro you gave him two rounds and there was no knockdowns and you so impressed with that and he's he, he more than double rashidi ellis more than doubled his rounds and just looked great in round seven man Rashidi Ellis threw 163 punches and landed 62. Rocha threw more, and his percentage ain't much higher. What are we talking about, bro? This is what they do to black fighters, bro. So you can see it live. Bro, why do they keep talking about Rocha like he's out here like on some Canelo Floyd shit? Virgil Ortiz. Yeah, to um actually keep clout chasing. Bro, he they're not calling none of Rashidi Ellis's punch. He just landed like two, three punches. Round eight. This is insane. This is insane. Now they're talking about some other... They're talking about Virgil Ortiz, but they're not saying nothing what Rashidi Ellis is doing, and he's doing good work right now. But they talking about Virgil Ortiz. Bro, Rashidi is winning round seven and eight. 
convincingly. Ortiz. And they talking about Virgil Ortiz, and who's not even fighting right now. Bro, Dazon, if Canelo sue him, they ain't going to make it in America. They can go overseas. I don't care about that. This is sad. This is sad commentary, bro. Rashidi just captured another round. Roach is not doing anything, and he's getting picked off. And they're like, oh, yeah, but Virgil Ortiz, nah, Virgil ain't fighting. Why are you even talking about Virgil? Talk about Danny. Bro, Roach just lost round seven and eight, clear. He lost a lot of the rounds in the beginning, clear. He won two rounds. I think it was five and six off the top of my head. They keep talking about... They, his, listen. Bro, my man just said, Roach, you're tired. And then his trainer just asked, are you tired? So listen, listen to the commentary I'm giving and listen to the sense of urgency in Rocha's corner. So let DAZN tell it. They're making it sound like it's a close fight. But then his his dad, I think his dad, I'm pretty sure his dad is his trainer. His dad is yelling at him saying, what's wrong? Bro, get DAZN commentaries the fuck out of here. So listen to my commentary and then listen to the dad and then listen to his commentary and tell me if the dad sound like he's watching the same fight that I'm watching and that's his son who he's training but the zone they making it sound like Rocha you said you're behind on the cards you might need a knockdown it turns out that could have been further from the case no, I think if you have a trainer you trust the wisdom of the trainer otherwise let it go bro stop it Bro, why are they just acting like, man, get these dudes. Bro, they're exchanging punches. They're like, great start for Rocha. Bro, what what fight are they watching? Bro, he said great start. He'd been outlanded. We're in round nine. This is crazy. Bro, he's having to reset constantly. So this round. Oh, he tried to catch him with the uppy. And he's losing it. What, do, what are we talking about? Bro, he Rashidi Ellis is keeping his hands busy right now. Now they saying Roach is waiting. Man, get the zone the fuck up out of here, bro. And he's not because there's something that Ellis is doing. Bro, if you black, I don't even understand why you would even be signed to Golden Boy. Listen to this commentary, bro. Like Errol said to De La Hoya, I'm cool. I don't like the way you treat black people. Bro, they acting like one person's working. They're, they're acting like the winner is losing. He's losing this round too. In round nine, he lost la round seven clear, round eight clear, and Rocha is losing round nine so far with a minute left. Let's see what happens. Bro, he's waiting. You, you're losing. You need a knockdown or, or a change of pace. You've won two rounds, five and six. And he's getting out jabbed right now. And he's just hit him with the one, two. Bro, Rashidi Ellis is 40 seconds. He better do something. Man, get get the zone out of here, bro. Bro, he is waiting. He's not throwing nothing. Bro, nice body shot by Ellis. Bro, he's losing this round clear. He just got hit with the one, too. Come on, Ellis. Let's go. Let's go. Of course he's feeling good. He just wouldn't be feeling good with y'all weak-ass commentary. Oh, Ellis is letting his hands go, bro. Bro, he is getting touched the fuck up. Like I've been telling you. That was round nine. Round seven, eight, and nine. De La Hoya in the back looking zooted. Anyway, 
listen to me, people. Rounds seven, eight, nine, clear Rashidi Ellis rounds, especially seven and nine. Eight was a Rashidi Ellis round for sure, but he did better work in seven and nine. And they they all quiet. Man, get these dudes. Let's just say I'll believe it when I say it. Well, he looks fitter. Looks thinner. Looks healthy. This is embarrassing commentary, bro. This is embarrassing. And the thing is, you don't have to make the fight. Just call what you're seeing on the screen. Block Santiago. I'll do it. Block him. Round 10. Let's see. Rocha got to do something big. He got three rounds. Oh, he just got caught with a left hook. Ellis. Ellis hit him with a left hook. Oh, he got hit with an uppercut. Bro, he just got hit with an uppercut. Ellis is letting his hand go. It's because he's not jabbing. Rocha's not jabbing. You got a guy with hand speed, speed. Good to the body by Ellis. Now that now the zone commentary trying to switch. They they saying he need a knockout to win. Bro. Bro, why are they acting like Rocha the only one throwing punches? This shit has to be a joke. Bro. Rocha is landing singles. Rashidi is letting his hands go the whole round. And they're like, oh, Rocha. <laughs> Bro, Rocha getting pieced up. Rocha got to turn the pay. He just got caught. Oh, my God, bro. Bro, Ellis just countered him with right. His head went like that. They ain't saying nothing. Yeah, and Golden Boy ain't giving him no activity. The black fighter. And, and Rocha just fought earlier this year. Bro, he is getting countered. Bro, he is getting countered by... Now they're saying Ellis is hurt. They're saying it's a good round for Rocha. What are we watch? What are they watching? They just said you got to keep pressing, and he's not keep pressing. Oh my gosh, bro, he's losing this round too. Bro, he's losing this round, and they just say good round for Rocha. Sympathy round? What? There's no crowd even there. It's a pandemic. What do you? He just got caught with a. He got caught with a right hook. He got hit with a right hook, and they didn't call it. They talking about if the. These guys are remedial. He said he can hear everything. There's no crowd. Of course he can hear everything. Now they're trying to switch up, you see? Bro, he lost this round too. Pretty darn good. Bro, they just said good round for, for Rocha, and he lost that round too. <laughs> this is laughable. Shout out to the Spanish. Listen, he watching the Spanish telecast. The Spanish commentators are saying Ronald Ellis is easily ahead. Exactly. Because in Mexico, they, they'll keep it real, bro. They love their boxing, boxeo. They, they'll keep it real. They don't care. They don't care about the like skin color and all this and that. They, they want to see. Come on, bro. But you got these uh, Sergio Mora, a Chicano, and he's telling you that Roach is doing so, so well. He ain't doing shit, bro. He really isn't. This is sad, bro. It's round 11. This man needs a knockdown or a knockout to win. Knockdowns. 
he gave round 11 10 Chris Mannix said bro he just gave Rocha the round 10 and he lost Bro, they just giving sympathy rounds. What did he do in round 10? What did he do in round 10? Shout out to Mexico. You a real one. Emilio. I was like, Emilio. Bro, Rocha look. He don't look that great for what he's supposed to be. He hasn't looked good this whole fight. He's plotting. He's coming forward. He has to keep reset. He getting countered. He getting out slick. Bro. This is an easy fight to score, too. Bro, how did how did Rocha win round 10? What did he do? Man, shoot that uppercut, Ellis. Shoot that up here. And the other BS is that, oh, he just got pot. Bro, he just got hit with the right. And he just got caught with the left. Bro, Rocha losing. He's just getting pieced up. He just got hit with a two-piece. And, and listen how quiet the DAZN commentators are now. Anytime you have a fighter like Alexis or Rocha kind of hesitating like this, he's worried about the counterpunching of the sharper puncher. See, when Ellis is doing good jamming, it's all quiet. But Rocha do one thing, and then, oh, Rocha. Bro, he losing bad. It's not even. Y'all don't know how to score boxing, bro. Yeah, get the likes up. He needs a knockout or multiple knockdowns. No. Exactly. Bro, he he's getting hit. He losing all these rounds. He's not, e bro. He's not even throwing punches right now. You're down in the fight. You need a knockout to win, and you're hesitating. You're supposed to be the vicious power puncher, come forward, plotting, knock you out, Guerrero. This is what you're supposed to be, and you're freezing up. And he just jabs six times. This dude on DAZN is an idiot. He said none of them touched the glove. Bro, there's range finder jabs. Yeah, every punch. I, I can't I can't do this, bro. I can't do this, bro. Not every punch is even meant to land. Sometimes you just keep someone, you, you shoot the jab to offset and disrupt what they're doing. It's like a snappy jab, just bop, 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 to set up what's following. This dude said, oh. Several jabs and not any of them landed. Bro, it's the same thing Teofimo was doing. Lomachenko moves like this and is constantly moving and frenetic and boom, boom, boom. Hold on, let me listen. He's constantly moving. You have to disrupt that. I told you I want two or three punches. I don't want you being lazy in there. there his, his dad calling him lazy. Bro, he need a knockout to win. It's the final round. Bro, if you don't get a knockout or several knockdowns, he definitely losing. 12th round. And he got just hit with a left on a temple. Somebody's screaming. Hold on. They're trying to create havoc or something. Well, if he does need a, a knockdown, Alexis Rocha, how does he best go about getting You know what? The body shots would have done it, maybe uppercuts. But you have to dedicate to the body. He ain't been doing that consistently. He's supposed to block that shot, but then he leaves you up for uppercuts. So I think maybe a right uppercut or right hook from the southwest stance of Alexis Rocha. But you need to set him up with body shots. He's trying to corner him, but he's... Yeah, bro, you getting outboxed right here. And he just got caught with a right. Yeah. Yeah, bro, he too worried about the counter and the speed. 
Speedy is tagging him. Oh, he said, oh, oh, oh. Bro, his head is bopping. Oh, oh, oh. He's saying, oh, as he's throwing the punches. And an uppercut. Uh, Rashidi is dogging this man, bro. He dogging him. Shout out to my boy Rashidi Ellis. Bro, and he just dodged one. Uh. Bro, Alexis needs a knockout to win. He got a minute and a half. Be first, and he's not being first, and he's getting countered, and he's getting dogged in this round. Smash the like button. What a performance here from Rashidi Ellis. Man, shut the fuck up. You were just acting like Rocha was Thanos. Bro, Rocha needs a knockout to win. He's not even pressing forward. He's not even throwing punches like that. Bro, he just pot shot it. They not even they just talking over everything good that Rashidi Ellis. He's tagging him, bro. But, now it's a learning experience. Bro, he getting pieced up. Okay. Bro, he he. Now they now they doing the now they spinning it saying it's a learning experience. No one will write him off. Bro, he getting tagged. Fuck you mean, bro? He just got hit with three punches. Fuck you mean. Bro, you got ten seconds to get a knockout. This man got dogged. <laughs> bro, bro, he got dog. He won two, three rounds. And the third is just like a charity round. Dog. Weak ass disown commentary. Fuck you mean. Bro, this is sad. This is sad how they did the boy Rashidi Ellis. He was getting off tonight. Rocha, bro, he, he didn't have nothing. He didn't have nothing for, like, answer-wise. And then when he had a little bit of momentum, like he tried to throw some punches, he always got gun shy. Earlier in the fight, Rashidi was styling on him and showboating and doing all this other stuff. Bro, he was getting, cl he was getting clipped. That's not even, if it's, any, bro, he getting hit with solid shots. If it's anything other than unanimous decision, Golden Boy is capped. Period. Cause this they were clearly pushing Rocha and he just got handed he just got his his L handed to him on a silver platter. Non negotiable. No, nah, I don't now they talking about COVID. <laughs> you see how it's always an excuse for old media? I mean, but COVID, I mean <laughs> nah. Y'all ain't doing the, the the Rona test. Hey, the cash apps on the screen. Dollar sign box and ego. I should get out of here, bro. This is too easy. If if this is like a majority decision or a split decision or a Rocha wins, Golden Boy is all the way capped. Because this man, Blair Cobbs and Ellis, or Ortiz, great. That's great matchmaking. That's good. I like them. Yeah, smash the like button. <laughs> Bro, he won super convincing. And he looked disappointed right now. Rashidi looks confident. Bro, that looked like a sparring session. Truth be told. And they and Golden Boy was pumping Roja. WBC International Silver Welterweight Champion. Here are the judges' totals. Jerry Cantu and Chris Migliori both have it 116-112. Fernando Villarreal, 115-113. Your winner by... 115-113. Fuck out of here. Still undefeated from Lynn, Massachusetts, Speedy Rashidi. Bro, I'm the god of this boxing talk. I'm the god of this boxing talk. I am the god of this boxing talk, bro. I told you. 
man, fuck all the disown what they talking about because they was acting like Rashidi Ellison or Ellis, excuse me, wasn't doing anything. They was acting like he wasn't doing anything for the whole fight. And then after he convincingly wins now, oh yeah, I mean, oh, he was landing his speed and no, don't try to change it now. After the black fighter won that you wasn't giving him no type of props, no type of credit for his performance, what he was doing. And he was picking off the man. 115, 113 was cap. That we all know that. I, I I don't care about the scorecard. It is cap though. But the right man won, so that's more important. And he won by unanimous decision. Like I said, if Golden Boy, they bro, they fixing fights or something. If they would have seen this allegedly majority decision or split decision, bro, he just lost. Like I was telling y'all. Triple G from the fight, Lou La Bamba Diamond Phillips. He is from the fight, Lou Diamond Phillips. Facts. Jamal Charlo versus Mungia is Charlo versus Centeno 2.0. <laughs> Y'all wrong. You, yeah. The Mungia should be up next. Shout out to my boy Rashidi Ellis, Speedy. He look good out there, bro. And, and this is how. Hold on. This is how weak the DAZN commentary is. Whoever the fuck the dude is, when the when the telecast started, he said, Rashidi Ellis, he wants to fight guys like Manny Pacquiao and, you know, Errol Spence, Keith Thurman. Ha, ha, ha. Good luck with that. That's literally what he said. But what's so funny about that? And what's funny to me is this. Golden Boy and the same DAZN commentators Always clout chase Virgil Ortiz's name with PBC fighters. So why is it so laughable to see Rashidi Ellis try to fight against the top person? You see what I'm saying? Why why is that funny to you that Rashidi Ellis wants to fight the top names, but then when it comes to Virgil Ortiz and he wants to fight the type, top names, Nobody is saying anything. Nobody's laughing at that. Come on, bro. This is sad. Mugi is up next. I see. This is real sad, bro. This is sad. He said when they said that, I was appalled. Yeah, bro, that's not even like why. So why is that so laughable or out of the question? Did he look like he, you know, would just be the worst fight for um, one of them dudes? No. You know, I don't I don't see what what's so shocking about that. The guy said, oh, good luck with that. One fifteen, one thirteen is trash. <laughs> hey, the zone ain't gonna last in America. I'm gonna tell you that. There's no way. This commentary is egregious. This is horrible. <laughs> Their commentary is horrible, bro. Rocha was not doing anything. Like, bro, respect to Team Rocha, like his pops is his trainer. Respect to them because his dad, a.k.a. his trainer, family blood, they're not yes men. They were keeping it real with with Rocha and from what I heard in the corner. But then you had the DAZN commentary crew, and they acting like Rocha was, like, dominate. See, this is the problem I have with, with commentary. How do you have all this positive commentary for one fighter, like let's say Rocha, and let them tell it, it sounds like you're making it sound like Rocha's doing great. But then as the fight progresses, you're, you're talking about Rocha needs a knockout to win and he better win the next couple rounds. He needs knockout to win. Where did that come from? Because the whole telecast, you've been on your knees like begging and praying to 
the Rocha gods. You see what I'm saying? This is sad, bro. This commentary is sad. And that's the problem is because there's a lot of people who haven't been watching boxing as long as me or some of you guys. And they look forward to what's being said to them. They're impressionable, right? Why they all got the black shirts? They went to Marshall's. They went to Ross and got everybody black <laughs> bowling league shirts. <laughs> hey, the zone is... This is just such a poor quality um, product. It just really is. Would you work for DAZN as a commentary? I'm a businessman. So if anybody got business, they can holler at me on business. I'll always hear people out what they talking about. It depends on business. It ain't no, there ain't no one, like, it's not a snapback. The business got to make sense. If business makes sense, then the business makes sense. If it don't, it don't. Period. That's uh, not that's not a open and shut question. Anywho, the current I don't know about all that, but the current DAZN commentary crew is Trinidad. Damn, Eric Morales. He, he he looked like he got like a Wakanda robe on. That shit looked dope. That looked dope. But, yeah, man, the commentary was pretty bad with, with, with this DAZN. Mungia is coming up next. Bro, I should have bet on that fight. I told you Rashidi's nice. I told you, I, Ego Stradamus, I just keep striking. I just, how do I keep getting it right? That you can say whatever you want about my channel, my delivery, whatever, the way I look, but you can't stop the facts. You can't stop the facts. I keep getting it right. That was some bad commentary, bro. Like I said, see, commentary like that, they just lead you up a blind alley because they're raving about the one fighter that they're trying to push or whatever, and they're raving about it, and then you would think that this person is just, like, unstoppable and winning the fight. But then once it's um, kind of getting out of hand that they're losing, then they'll just revert back to, oh, yeah, Rashidi, I mean, he's doing he's doing good now. He, you know, Rocha can't figure out the speed. But that's not what you were saying for, for the last seven rounds. How you just all of a sudden switch up? How do you just switch up like that? Like that only that never made sense to me, bro. How you just lead the believer the lead the viewers to believe that this is what's happening. And then randomly you you're talking about after all this Rocha praise, you randomly say, um, Oh, yeah, Rocha, you know, he needs a knockout to win. Like, where did that come from? How he need a knockout to win? He was making it sound like he was dominating. How would Charlo knock out Mungia? I mean, he ain't even fighting Mungia, so we'll see what happens here. But Mungia get touched. He don't have a strong defense. This could be a dangerous fight for him. You know, if Toriano Johnson is, you know, still got it and he was durable in the past, this could be a, a hard fight for him. Mugia got hurt by Spike O'Sullivan, you know, and he's young and he don't have no defense. He he would a legend, you know, El Terrible, Eric Morales. Let's see what they've been working on. But the, the Mugia I've seen for several fights, you know, he, he does get hit. And that's his style. But my thing is, as you move up the ranks and fight better competition, you can't you can't just get hit. Will you know what I'm saying? Just give up free shots because you want to be in there and bang. That's not how that works. I need y'all to get the likes up.
I need y'all to get the likes up. Shout out to my boy Kamal Oz. Well, that the Charlo fight, I don't see Mungia fighting Charlo. Because Charlo, you just you just can't be walking in on him. He got a great job. That would be a bad matchup for him. Triple G finna fight Lou Mambo Mambo number five Vega facts. We're gonna see. He oh well, he coming on right now. You notice for this fight, I was just watching it. I couldn't even call it the BWP. You know what I'm saying? Because BWP is kind of for the bigger fights. It's on the zone. The zone. The fight is on the zone. It's about to come on right now. Oh, shit. I got to mute it real quick because of the, the copyright songs. Why is he walking out like Frankenstein? Toriano Johnson walking out like a penguin. Oh, my gosh. Bro, I don't like how he walked out, bro. He walked out like happy feet. Like he just woke up or something. Y'all see that? Bro, he look like he just woke up. Bro, he don't look, I don't know. He don't look too confident right now. Man, what the hell? Hey, Andre Rozier train him? Okay. Shout out to the boy Rozier. Yo, we need to be at 200 likes. Let's go. We're not that far. He said Lou Bega. <laughs> Y'all tripping, bro. Y'all tripping. Y'all really tripping. Jaime Munguia walking out now. I need to get the lights to like 200. Let's go. Bro, I'm going to be working hard tomorrow. I'm going to be working hard. Y'all got to pray for me. I'm going to be working hard. Charlo would punch a hole through Moongia chest. <laughs> hey, well, Icy, why you do it like that? That's hilarious. That's hella funny. Like that Bro, this could be a this could be a difficult fight. But I don't know. I haven't caught all of Toriano Johnson's recent fights. But I know his regular style, like how he's always fought. Against the ropes. Who's that? Meg Ryan? I don't know. Bro. Mungia looked like Tong Po. Mali. Good fuck. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Bro, he looked like Tong Po from uh, Kickboxer. Hold on. My boy. Bro, he looking like my boy Tong. This man looked like Tong. Remember my boy Tong Po? Mali, good fuck. <laughs> Bro, Toriano Johnson just woke up. Bro, this man, like, if he shaved his shit bald, he'd be straight up on some tongue po shit. Look, Jaime Mugia, he got that tongue pole. No, stop. <laughs> no. Classic Van Damme shit. Bro, Toriano Johnson looked like a, I don't know. I don't know if he's just in the zone. His record stands at 21 victories with just two. Bro, he looking at him like sleepy or food. I can't tell. Kickboxer is a classic. Look, there go Mungia. <laughs> he on that Mungia shit. Hold on. Hold on. 
Mali Gulfara. Including 28 big wins coming by way of knockout. Hold on. I need y'all to smash the like button. It's about to start. I need y'all to smash the like button. It's about to go down. Is Jaime Munguia as good as his record indicates? Toriano Johnson doesn't think so. He's about to find out. If there was not a pandemic right now, this fight would most likely be in Mexico in front of 15,000 passionate fans instead. Mali Guru. Told you. Who's used to the roar of the crowd. Instead, he's going to have Mali Good. I told you. Look. Tong Po with it. For 12 rounds, 160 pound middleweight division. Toriano came straight to him. He knows how to smother power. He knows how to smother speed. He's very active. He throws a lot of punches. And he is going to have to concentrate on, on oh. power. Oh. Of just He's trying to smother him. It's going to be hard to keep up with Oh. Activity. Toriano Johnson Punch throwing. Already for Johnson. Bro. He's fighting like this is a one round fight. Bro. Toriano is coming like he don't give a fuck. But that's how he fights. That's why I said I ain't seen him. Exactly what he told us he was Bro. Doing. Bro, he's hitting him in the back. Oh, shit. Oh, he elbowed him. Oh, shit. Bro, he throwing crazy in the back of that. Bro, Toriano Johnson throwing like. Bro, Mugia ain't throwing. Are they trying to get him to box? Oh, oh. Mugia caught him with, with a left. Good body shot by Mugia. Mugia. Mugia got off the. There's a lot of punches being thrown. Hold on, Mugia backed him off a little bit. Bro, Toriano John, I told you this is gonna be an action fight. Mugia using his elbows. Bro, he could. Get, oh shit, he could get a cut though, cause Toriano rough. Mugia better watch out, cause he's bending down, like his head is tilted down, and Mugia's shorter. Bro, Mugia is shorter. I mean, Toriano is shorter, and he coming in like reckless. He could fuck around, and get cut. Somebody said, "How high does he have his truck?" He got his trucks pulled up like Steve Urkel. <laughs> Bro, he ain't letting him breathe. Bro, Toriano fighting like he he fighting for his freedom or some shit. Bro, he fighting for something different. Bro, he got them Urkel shorts. And then I ain't do that. <laughs> Bro, he got his shit pulled. Oh, shit. Bro, he, he trying to mug him. He, he kind of fighting like Robert Guerrero did Birdo. Oh, he got... Bro, what? Bro, he got old, like... The, remember the NBA basketball? Before it had hella black people in it? He got them NBA shorts. Bro, he just, he's throwing some clubbing weird shit. He not even... Ja oh, that was a nice uppercut by Mugia. Oh, Mugia's get... He start getting some shit off. Hey, Mugia got a couple... I would give... I will probably give the round to Toriano. Because he started off, he was more consistent. Mugia wasn't throwing enough, but he landed some good shots. Bro, Mugia. He, bro, Charlo Mugia, no. Dervinchenko had a better chance of beating Charlo, which we've seen. I, I told you that wasn't going to happen. Dervinchenko had a better stylistic chance to beating Charlo. Mugia, bro, the way he getting hit like that right now, that wouldn't be a good fight, bro. He would, he would have to... It would be one of them fights where he had to try to win a battle of attrition and hope Charlo ain't in shape and hope t Charlo get tired from not knocking him out type shit and then try to come on heavy and capitalize off some type of moment. But stylistically, that's not a good fight for him. Not saying I wouldn't want it. I mean, it's whatever. They can they could fight. I'm just telling you my opinion. Yeah, that's, that's a big addition to it. 
Hey, we need to get the likes to 250. Let go. Round two. Yeah, I gave Toriano round one. Mungia landed some good shots, but he didn't work as much as Toriano. Bro, he ain't even using no jab. He's just trying to bully his way in. I don't know if Eric Morales got Jaime Mugia trying to box more. I think he's trying to have him. He's, he got him trying to box or something because Mugia don't. Mugia normally start getting off with the offense, but he's trying to taint. All this stuff wears you down that Toriano Johnson's doing. He's bullying his way in. Bro, he, bro, he he landed a two. He doubled up, Toriano. Bro, Toriano's doing doing solid. Mugia needs spacing because he got long arms. Bro, oh, he got hit. Bro, Mugia doesn't have the extension on his punches because this guy just keep coming in. Bro, he, bro, he, Toriano, you, oh my gosh. Bro, this is a weird ass style. Man, Sergio Mora, his commentary, horrible. Um, Jay Lee, $5 super chat, smash the likes for the good live commentary facts. I'm going to tell you in a second. He needs, he needs, he needs this space. Man, Sergio Moore commentary, horrible. Buns. That was a good body shot by Mungia. Oh, nice uppercut. How did he step back? He was in the corner. He's just saying whatever. Mungia is like more selective. He's picking his shots. Oh, he did a body and then a hook. That was good. That was good for Mugia. Bro. Mugia landed some good shots. Oh. Bro, his own commentary is so horrible. Bro. Block Gilberto Munoz. Mooney's. Oh, nice stuff from Jaime. I, I think I'll get that round of Mungia. He picked his spots good. Listen, Toriano Johnson, you know who he fights like? I gave Mungia round two. He landed the crispier shots. And he was authoritative with him. Um, Toriano Johnson is like Delphine Persoons. The one that fought Katie Taylor. He not even trying, like, he ain't even trying to make it look pretty. He just trying to be all up in your shit and grind you down, like you know, just real rigid. You know what I'm saying? Hacksaw type. Like, if if you get bit by certain animals or like you get cut, it'll be a certain type of incision. You know, like like sharks have like serrated teeth or whatever. But if you get bit by certain animals, <clears throat> um, hold on. My bad. If you like, let's say you get a you get into like a industry accident at your job, you get your fucking finger sliced off precisely. But if you get bit by a shark because they have serrated teeth or like you know a crocodile or something, that shit might actually, um, it won't be an uh, a perfect incision. My bad. I'm trying to watch this as as I was talking. That was hard. Oh, he stepped around him. That was good. That was good for Mungia. Bro, he fighting like Delphine Persoons. Like he just coming for you in, in your kitchen. He don't care if it looks sloppy, rabbit punch. Punch you in the stomach, punch you in the arm, like it's, get it how you get it. A couple years later, he'll be in his early thirties. He thinks he's regressing age-wise. His legs are 
are telling me a different story because he's, he's falling off balance coming forward. Oh, nice left by Mungia. Bro, these blank man shorts is killing me. Mungia is kind of slowing down the aggression in round three. He's he's like picking his spot. He, he's 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 actually boxing him more because this dude's so wild. He's using the round. That's cool. That he needs that spacing. He needs that spacing because he got long arms and he's six foot. Johnson clearly more compact, but Magia still looks like a young guy. He's 24. I can't listen to this commentary. He looks like a young guy. You know, we're all wondering when Magia is. Hey, let's get to 250 likes. Let's go. Bro, he leaning in. You better watch out for that uppercut, Toriano Johnson. See, look, shoot the uppercut, Mungia. Bro, I. I hit that uppercut. His head is down. He's not going to see that shit. Good body shot. Good tempo shot. It looked like it rocked his leg. Toriano. Oh. Toriano swung back, though. He blocked that. Um, Mugia. Mugia. Oh, that was a nice uppercut. He threw. Bro, he threw a left and a right uppercut. That was clutch. Seconds to go here in the third round. Another good one for Mungia. Johnson fought the entire I gave Mungia that round two. That round eight. two and three. Bro, Toriano, you got to make some adjustments, like some type of strategy. You're just coming in, you're getting picked off. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I gave uh, Mungia the last two rounds. Two and three, I gave Toriano the first round only. Block Julio. He said, let us watch it. Block Felipe. Bro, we don't do illegal activities that y'all trying to, trying to do. That's not what this is for. Hey, block these dudes, bro. It's interesting so far to see Mungia, he's actually boxing more because this Toriano is so wild, he has to play more of the boxer. So Eric Morales might have him on his boxing. Very bright opening round for Toriano Johnson. Appears to have gone the way of Heine Mungia. Chris they punch it on the brakes. Two rounds to one in favor of Mungia. Johnson was effective. I think he took Mungia off guard a little bit in that first round. Nice uppercut. Ooh, nice uppercut. Bro, he... This was brilliant about some Mexican fighters that have great combination punching. He just hit him with a right uppercut and then threw, I think, a body shot and then threw a left uppercut. You don't always see that. You got a certain teaching. Bro, he hitting him in the temple and all types. Oh, good body shot. Don't sit in the middle of that. I hear Andre Rozier. Oh, they in the phone booth now. Andre Rozier asking for a lot from this 36 year old. Double and triple it. Because Andre Rozier saw that body shot. That body shot made the right L. Why are they always screaming? The zone and, and Tim Bradley always be screaming on these commentary. Oh. I remember when I was fighting. Oh. Jake Alexander. Bro, they throwing. They throwing round. What is it for? Bro, they throwing leather. Is is Mungia doing the shoulder roll? Well, I had the opportunity to sit right behind Andre Rozier when Daniel Jacobs was fighting Canelo Alvarez, and I mean his instructions were spot on. Oh, bro, Toriano's like he's like a gnat. He is a great in-fight manager. No, no, he he really is an exceptional uh, trainer because not only was he predicting what I was going to do, but Hey, the danger with a guy like Toriano Johnson is this. If you don't stop him and you start getting tired and he got that, like, second win, then he going to be a problem because 
you're young. Jaime Mungia, if you don't stop him in the next couple rounds, it's like who knows what his condition is because it looks like Jaime Mungia got to do a lot to make weight. So you start getting to six, seven, eight, ninth round. I don't know because this this is a, a this is a very taxing style that Toriano Johnson brings. You've seen it with Katie Taylor. I think it was a perfect uh, comparison. Delphine Pursuns. Delphine Pursuns is it's just like an irritating style. If you can't stop them and you start getting tired and they doing all that, then that's what it really gets interesting because you're going to have to bite down or, you know, you could mess around and get stopped. See? Good round here for Toriano Johnson just when he looked to be getting fatigued and slowing down. That, that's a difficult. Oh, I might have gave that round to Toriano. I, I might have gave that round. It, it might be two apiece. It might be two apiece. It might be two apiece. Round one and whatever that was, five or whatever for Toriano. And then two and three uh, for Mungia. Mungia, I don't know. He looked a, he was a little bit more like guarding home. I need to get to 275 likes. Let go. Bro, I told you he's he's identical. He's like the black Bahamian uh, Delphine Persoons. He's just rugged. So I'm telling you, if you can't stop a person like this, because Jaime Mugia ain't Floyd Mayweather where he don't get punched and shit. So if you get in them later rounds, Floyd knows how to conserve his energy and slow the pace down and stuff. But if you've been warring with this dude, you can't get tired with him. So you better stop him in the next few rounds because if you don't, it'll get real interesting. Because he's he's not he's like won't stop. You know what I'm saying? And that's if you're tired. Imagine being tired. Imagine being on a treadmill at the gym and you tired as fuck, and somebody keep like jumping on you. Like you you ever like any of y'all that I don't have kids, but you ever see like. You, you like if you have kids, you come home and you tired as fuck because you work 10 hours at work and you had a long day lifting stuff and your kids is all hyper and shit. Oh, daddy, daddy. You know what I'm saying? And pulling on your shirt and shit. And you just like, damn, I want to shower, eat something good. That's how this style is. It's on the zone. This is. Bro, he capping. He he looked the same with Morales that he looked before Morales. Toriano need to shoot the uppercut. Oh, see, Mungi is getting clipped right now, like with some even shots. Bro, people like Toriano make you make you expend too much energy. You got to stop this man. You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't he ain't put a beating on him like he did Liam Smith to the point where Toriano's power would be all the way depleted, especially at 160. Mugia Mugia is not um he's new in this weight class. You see what I'm saying? This ain't 54. Because right now, Toriano Johnson, in the last two rounds, he got the better energy level. Bro, and Mungia is trying to walk off him, and he's following him. This motherfucker on him like a shadow. Bro, he on him like a shadow. He's trying to get some space, and he won't give him no space. Look, and he's not, he don't, bro, he don't have no time to, to think. Mungia is running, bro. He's running like, Trying to get some spacing, and this dude is on him like a fucking T on a, a tick on a tit. <laughs> Toriano got to throw some punches on the way in, though. Go to the body, then. Facts. Interesting. See, they just said it, bro. Keep keep jabbing. Toriano got a jab on him. We need two seventy five likes. Let go. Metal weights? What the fuck is a metal weight? 
see, that's not good for Jaime Munguia. He look. He just took a deep gulp, a deep breath. That's not good because Jaime Munguia, he didn't have the spacing to get them them shots off that he wanted. I don't know, dog. I think I gave that last round to Toriano. Two rounds to three. What y'all have? I think round, whatever, three, two and three to Mungia, and then the other first, and then the last two to Toriano. Mungia can't fight going backwards. Exactly. And the other thing is, I don't think it's just that he can't fight going backwards. I think he can fight going backwards in small chunks, but his style is not to continuously fight off the back foot. You see what I'm saying? He needs time to set up his punches and he likes to plow forward. You know what I'm saying? So this is all brand new. So I think he can do it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's like Canelo versus Golovkin won. He was able to use his footwork and showed you that he used his legs more in the first triple G fight, but he wasn't able to sustain that. And he started getting tired. Mugia started fast, round six. Round six, a fast start for Mugia. Bro, he's trying to get him off, get up off me. Good start for Mugia so far. Don't let Toriano get in that gear again. Oh, some dudes you got to just fight, bro. This, this, bro. Some, I'm telling you, some dudes you got to fight. You got to get that respect. You. This ain't the fight to be trying to box and learn shit you learn in the gym. You better fight this motherfucker. Sidestep him. What you doing? Come on. Oh, Mugia got hit with a, a big shot. Mugia is getting hit with the sweeping short hook. Bro, what? Bro, Mugia is getting hit on the temple. Oh, that was a nice left hook, and he backed up. Bro, Mugia, bro, Mugia started off very well, and then now he's getting backed up. Nice body shot by Jaime. Bro, Toriano, he doing a high. Bro, if Toriano had a jab, he, he'd be a real problem. Bro, he's just running his way in like some Sean Porter style. <laughs> Motherfucker. This motherfucker running in like NFL blitz. Bro, who is he looking at? Man, smash the like button. Yeah, and he's taller. Well, he should be jabbing. Toriano backing up now. Mugia missed a lot of that. Bro, this is a, gr a grinding fight. Bro, stay on his ass. That's your best chance of winning. He just flicked out a little stiff arm. <laughs> Why he called time? They, oh, this referee full of shit. He got a cut and he just stopped it. He's just giving him time. Come on, bro. Come on, dog. Bro, he a warrior anyway. He going, man, come on. Oh, it's on his lip. Oh, shit. Never mind. I thought it was his eye, dog. Bro. Bro, his lip finna fall off. That okay, I thought it was his eye. Never mind. Oh, uh, that man, this is weak. Bro, his lip is split like Alistair Overeem. Bro, if it goes to the scorecard, he wins on the scorecard. Mogia, oh, that's fucked up. Mogia is trying to turn it up on him because if it goes to the scorecard. Bro, his lip finna fall off. That was weak. 
Bro, they got to go to the scorecards. Bro, that's fucked up. They Golden Boy ain't finna let this go to the scorecards. I don't think he can go out like that, bro. Bro, his lip is cut in half. Oh, it's over. Do they go to the scorecards? Bro, if it goes to the scorecards, Toriano. How is that a TKO, bro? Bro, his lip looked disgusting. What the fuck? Just in time for Halloween. Man, that's disrespectful. Get this man out of here. He said just in time for Halloween. Come on, bro. That was that was that was out of pocket. Bro, he just said just in time for Halloween, the motherfucking lip looked like it's gonna fall out. And he ain't the one taking punches. That's that's wrong, bro. The zone has the worst commentators in the game. Oh my gosh. Exploded Johnson's face with a right uppercut. And if you wondered if Mungia can punch going backwards, stepping backwards, you just found that out as well. Tom, they, they are scoring this as a punch, and it'll be a TKO. Oh, that's TKO weak. That's weak. So it's always. Win for Jaime Mungia, certainly not the way he wanted to win it, you would think. But he does improve to 36 and 0 with now 29 knockouts. Johnson will go. Home tonight and feel That's, very bad. Come on, bro. And wonder what might have been because his game plan appeared to be working. That was so weak. He's about to start working. It's a shame because Andre Rogier, I'm sure they had, they had a strategy going. Bro, they didn't. I told you that. What I tell you, they weren't gonna let it go to the scorecards. Exactly what they prepared for. So credit to Mungia because Mungia did some things. Bro, that was weak. He was up. He was up. Bro, the jury's still out on Mungia, bro. The jury's still out, bro. Uh, that's not, that wasn't convincing. Because he was losing. Like, yeah, so one punch wins it all. It don't go to the scorecards. For a, like, I don't know, bro. That was a nasty uppercut, though. WBO Intercontinental. Yeah. Block Cali Mexican 707. Well, how would you rate his performance? That's what's up. Block him. I, I saw some things that, that I can see the young man doing different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was the fight was heating up. Um, I don't know. We'll see how Jaime Munguia does at 160. But he was in tough. He was in real tough. Bummer for an ending because, you know, it never, nobody wants to see a fight end in a non-traditional way. Oh, he ain't even talking. Uh, oh, Mungia tried to give him dap, and he just was like, he's, he pissed off. Probably because his last uh, big opportunity. That was a nasty cut, bro. <coughs> I guess it was fun while it lasted. But see, that's also for Toriano Johnson. That's part of his fault. Like, you don't have no defense. Moises, block him. That's what's up. Bro, they complain about my commentary, but they continue to watch me. That's hilarious. But anyway, block him when they hate, donate. Fighter not being able to get 
Oh, I see. He on that kill streak. Bro, his, bro, his lip looked terrible. That looked crazy. Well, it ended on, you know, on a bummer. It didn't end in a, a traditional way. But we got some more fights tomorrow. I'm about to wrap this up, eat my leftovers. Let me know what you guys think of the fight. Um, you know, it's just a bummer when the fight ends. You know, in a non-traditional way. But congrats to Mungia. We'll see where he goes from here. I don't know. Golden Boy, they're going to have to pick out a match him because Toriano was getting some stuff. They Did they even show the scorecards? I'm just curious what the scorecards are. Because I, I think Mungia, if it went to scorecards, Mungia would have lost that for sure. But they said it'll punch, open it up, so it didn't go to the scorecards. You knew that wasn't going to happen. When the cut is caused by a punch, it's a TKO. Sucks to have ended like that. Yeah, but, I mean, they're telling you it's a TKO. It, that was a clean punch, but he was taking punches like that all day. I can't see if the lip opened up from that. You know, it could have been from that punch, but it could have been a headbutt right after. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? they just telling us that was what it was. You know what I mean? So, um, bro, that DAZN curse keep kicking in. You see what I'm saying? That does own credit. Like, you could have had a classic, you know what I'm saying? At least in terms of action, warfare, and stuff. They were both, because I told you it was going to be interesting in the later rounds. And then it just ends in, in some, you know, some weak way, bro. Andre will probably wash Mungia. You know it would be a good fight? The Liam the Liam Williams or whatever that's Andre's mandatory versus Mungia. That that'll be a that'll be a good fight. They both got power and stuff. I hate when power is all they have to offer. Smash the like button. We're at 300 likes almost. Smash the like button. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh I'll be back with the Box of Ego watch party. Shout out to Mungia. He won. It was a uppercut punch. One of the worst cuts that I've seen on somebody's lip. It looked pretty bad. And he tried to jump on him and stuff. You know, boxing is a brutal sport. Anyway, hate when it ends like that, but that's the reality. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Peace out.